Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lena and it is time for the finishing of the scavenger hunt 2022. Yes. <laughs> so as usual, I'm going to do a visual video flip through so Janet can see that I worked on each prompt that she so gracefully gave us all on her New Year's Eve stream. <laughs> And um, her channel is Janet M. Young, so she's the host of the, and also I think the inventor of the scavenger hunt project. Just to summarize it up for people who is viewing this craziness for the first time, it's a set of prompts. I think last year it was about 100 prompts, and you get from New Year's Eve to the 1st of April to finish them off. And usually you work in a book, but since I kind of was uh, squeezed on time this year, I prefer to work on uh, small sections. So this is just an annual calendar <laughs> looking like this when it's not mucked up with all sorts of things. So I simply just gave one prompt this designated area. And of course, some of the prompts are tip-ins and stuff like that. So you can't do that on the actual place. So that's why there is a lot of things uh, just tipped in. Okay, but let's just very quickly go through this book <laughs> without tiring you guys up. This is Cancelled Postage. Create an ad. I actually found on uh, the internet uh, um, an ad from an old newspaper where this uh, explorer called Ernest Shackleton he was advertising for men for his uh, polar expedition and this is the ad that he wrote men wanted and when I read this up think about would you apply to this job <laughs> for hazardous journey small wages bitter cold long month of complete darkness constant danger safe return doubtful honor and recognition in case of success <laughs> so, i was looking for this because i don't recall if a streamer mentioned this or where i saw it but i it just popped up in my mind that oh i gotta look for that so um sorry if i'm stealing this from another person's scavenger hunt it was just uh, what came to my mind uh, playing cards, then I just took some stickers because you are allowed to use anything. You're not supposed to go totally strict on each prompt. So in this uh, scavenger hunt, I am uh, kind of redefining the prompts, you know, <laughs> still being in the game. And the pattern paper, I just took some pattern paper from Daphne's diary. And Dead by... And it's a clue item and that's a game that I don't really play I have never played it before but I was thinking about what could you be killed with like an item that that ends you off so I found some stickers that I thought I could use as examples and one of them is texting while walking and you ate hubby's home-cooked meal you sat on a pin and you left your house during the quarantine and puzzle then I just took a sticker and drew uh, puzzles uh, on top of it. Maybe I should lower the camera down if it's possible. <laughs> and then I just wrote that it's a puzzle. How the hell did the cat manage to get locked into the drawers with clean bedding sheets? Because that's really what she do. I mean, if I do laundry and I don't watch out, my cat will just roll herself in that <laughs> newly uh, washed laundry for some reason this is swatches and uh, it's because it's um, also a prompt and this is like actual swatches where I'm comparing the moleskin versus the Caran d'Ache watercolor pencils versus the Faber Castell the ink tins and some scribble sticks and I am quite surprised how the Karen Dash are so weak in pigment compared to the Moleskine or Moleskine watercolor pencil set. So um, that's why you do these swatches. Get to know your pigments and not just, uh, you know, look at the name thinking, oh, Faber Castell, then it must be like really cool. And then just uh, trust that blindfully, you know. <laughs> um, 
Okay, paint splatters. That was easy, right? And this is a Dear Diary entry. So I wrote uh, an entry for that day. An unused product that have to be like Janet's Circle Planets. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Janet likes to do these uh, papers where she's uh, making a whole sheet and then she punched them out in circles and she get these really fantastic patterns and the abstract looking uh, clusters of, of circle shaped pieces of, of paper that she used to uh, decorate books with and everything. But um, I just had like leftover pattern paper from a scrapbook project that I chose to punch out so mine is looking rather lame. <laughs> Tissue paper, that's from Tim Holtz Tissue Paper Roll. Draw an art supply, of course I drew watercolor palette, <laughs> that's my choice of media. And then uh, my oven, because um, I once used my oven as a light board. I didn't have a light board, so I just opened the lid to my oven and put a lamp underneath it. And then I had a glass plate from where I could transfer something. <laughs> and then I was so dumb to reveal it to the to the group, you know, so I got kind of teased with it. But it's okay, it's okay. And book page, I took a page from some, uh, I think it is, uh, let me see, what can it be? Uh, it must be like English to Spanish, no French, I think. Dictionary paper sent to me from CB and use makeup. Then I uh, used makeup and made my version of Woman on a Hill. And <laughs> I think it's Gagan who did this, not sure. <laughs> but uh, it's made totally with eyeshadow. And I think I made a stream of it, so uh, you can see it here on my channel if you want to see. <laughs> I only stream the prompts that are kind of crazy, you know, because uh, the one used makeup can be interpreted in a lot of ways. So, pet, and then I had a lot of stickers gifted to me from various fips. One of them was Kathy Burr, Kathy Arbor, and... Uh, I used some washi tape from Sandra down here. <laughs> Paper doll. I got two examples. I got some stickers from Kathy Arbor and then I also actually found and I had to tuck it in here because that's the pocket that's big enough for it. I found this crazy sheet. It's like sticker paper doll. Uh, you know, you have a girl right there and then you have on this page all the outfits that you can put on that particular girl. And you had a girl here and she could wear all these outfits. And it's like stationary paper where I don't recall if I think the girl is printed on this paper and then, um, you know, you can dress her up. <laughs> crazy. I think it's for kids, you know, but don't ask why I have it, but it actually came in handy with the paper doll prompt. So yay for keeping up old stuff in your drawers, right? A funny text message was also a prompt and uh, I had to go online and look for one. And uh, I found this one. Mom, stop. You're not funny. You never make jokes. And then the mom replied, I made you <laughs> acrylic skin. I don't really, the way that I use acrylic is that I have a disposable palette that I just work on until it's totally overworked. <laughs> so then I kick it out, but I had to cut out strips from that palette and glue in instead of acrylic skin. Use foil. I had a leftover piece here of something that I foiled, so I just tacked that in. Uh, coffee filter. Oh my god, I don't have anything on coffee filter. I think I'm... I'm okay, I'm going to work on that prompt today. <laughs> I thought it was finished. Tea bag packaging. My tea bag packaging is uh, over here. I glued in my tea bag and then the 
piece of paper to hold your tea bag with. I turned into a small envelope where you can uh, attach a little note <laughs> for someone if you want to. <laughs> it is so cute. It's from Daphne's Diary. I really love that magazine. It just sparks joy looking at the colors and all the ideas for small things. Anyway, this is yeah a pocket. It comes here. <laughs> Create a pocket. <laughs> Um, so that's why it's here. Uh, a menu, and then I just wrote what my son he wanted for his birthday. You know, when it's his birthday, he gets to choose the menu. So this year he ordered my meatballs that I make with feta cheese and dried sun-dried tomatoes, <laughs> boiled potatoes, and um, Oh my god, what is that vegetable called in English? In Danish it's blomkål. It's like a bloom... Uh, oh my god. A ca cauliflower? Is it called ca cauliflower? I think so. And then gravy. So, yeah, kind of boring, but fun for me to read. Uh, Yahtzee game. Yeah, I actually found a description of Yahtzee that I thought could fit so well if you put my life into it. <laughs> Listen to this. Yahtzee is a game that is primarily based on luck and probability. And I actually think you could like swatch out Yahtzee with Lena's life is a game that is primarily based on luck and probability. A greeting card. I got this wonderful card from Bob Owen. And she made this so it's also like fib art, so it's two prompts in one. Uh, and here add a pocket. I did this pocket and then I did this pocket here. And uh, then you can just tuck in uh, quotes. You must be the change you wish to see in the world by Gandhi. And then this is a card I got from Didi when she sent some happy mail. So of course it's going in there. Here I had awesome thoughts about putting in more quotes, but never really got that far. So they are just kind of empty, those pages. <laughs> but it's okay, it's okay. I just had to do the pocket. Pictionary. Uh, I'm writing that I hope it count that I played along on several of Janet's streams. <laughs> so, and feather, there's the feather that I painted. There's my gnome in a sticker, and then I drew one. And this pocket here contains uh, a box that I want uh, to save because uh, I can uh, redetach it and then I can recreate it later if I need a small box. So that's why he is there. Okay, something out of your trash can. And I took <laughs> some leftover packaging from some candy, a note that my hobby was drawing some road directions to me in that I think is rather funny. I'm the one who did all the writing, he did the drawing. <laughs> and the way it was just fun because it's just a random note, but it totally makes sense. Because you go down your big road and then you come to the place with the, the road bumps. And then at the house where there were all that Christmas crazy decoration, it was like really decorated this year, you know? <laughs> It like lit up so you could almost see it from the end of the road. You have to turn down that road and then the circle is showing where you have to go. So I just saved that as a road direction. <laughs> vegetable stickers. I got two from one from, but it's not even vegetable, it's from fruit. A banana and then a melon. <laughs> and then illuminated letter. Yeah. And then also postcard. They are joined together in one prompt over here where I'm painting an illuminated letter on a postcard and I chose L because my name is Lena. <laughs> and the bottom, I glued in some buttons and wrote, I didn't mean to push all your buttons. I was just looking for the mute button. And this is like use postcard. And the jelly print I actually got from Barb Oven, one of her art coins, 
that she uh, pushed out from her own jelly print paper. So of course I uh, had to uh, glue that in and then since I was working with illuminated letters I foiled in love you Barb because <laughs> foil is also one of the prompts. So page of shapes I used a border that was gifted to me from CB and a Happy Mail and the paper clip I have this gorgeous paper clip and I'm going to remove it from this scavenger hunt over to where it belongs in a journal <laughs> but it's Janet M. Young's she took my initials and then she sentangled these flaps put in magnets so that you have a paper clip is it awesome and it is so intricate I love it oh I'll, I'm pondering I could actually try and make a photocopy of it because I think I got these magnets too so uh, I could have it in both you know both my journal and then in this scavenger hunt so yeah I think I'm going to do that but I did find some uh, fun paper clips shaped as a five and the, the number four so washi tape had a lot of what is washi tape gifted from both Kathy Arbor and Sandra so here I chose the one from Sandra and I think it's James Burke and Jane Davenport artwork on these washi tapes and bingo I had the bingo stickers over here it really makes me ponder why the heck would you create something so stupid as bingo stickers what what if you won then you had to yell out the numbers from your winning plate but you put stickers on them <laughs> so can you take off the stickers I mean it makes no sense who sat down and thought that creating bingo stickers was a cool idea uh, but bingo I uh, just wrote in a joke also an elderly woman goes to the doctor's office the doctor give her a checkup and says I need to do stool blood and urine tests the woman says well can't I just leave my underwear bingo starts in half an hour <laughs> so twine ribbon and string I used ribbon scrapple tiles and then I hand drew a pile of scrapple tiles just lying in a bunch and wrote look I bought a book from Ikea <laughs> you can make your own book right but then I just drew my own uh, name in scrapple tiles and then uh, there was a lot of prompts this year regarding American games and they're not that popular up here in Denmark so I would say almost all of them was uh, new to me one of them was the taboo game and I did play along when Janet streamed <laughs> but uh, I have Peter okay the word you have to guess is Peter like pain in the ass you know and the, to clue it in you are not allowed to say annoying fib sealed lids crushed nips bots okay I don't know what that is I think I misunderstood the prompt but okay I tried candy packing packaging okay this page is totally ruined because one of the prompts was use spray and then I went a little bit overboard so uh, it kind of pushed back the whole page <laughs> uh, this is a coloring book page where I just cut out a section from a coloring book but I have actually been coloring it in with my uh, color pencils rubber stamps you can barely see them but it's planner stickers so uh, that's what they are doing here old mate card we don't have the game old mate so I just took some of Barb's relatives and glued in because I could see on the internet that uh, the old mate card it's a you know like a joker that you don't want to want to sit with in the end and she looked like an an old person <laughs> so I thought that this sticker was fun to use um then I wrote a quote better die an old maid than marry the wrong man and here we got fingerprints and they are totally gone now because of that spray that I did illustrate a quote the best way to begin the best way to get things done is simply to begin 
something strong will beat talent. And here we got tag, and my tag is actually this whole thing. Here I'm combining a tippin, a door, a tag, and a pocket. Yeah, I think. Yeah, and something from childhood. <laughs> so, uh, okay, let's just go through this, this tag. First of all, it's a coloring book page, so it's also reference to this prompt up here. And <laughs> the reason why I wanted to use this tag in my scavenger hunt is because look, <laughs> the person, you know, I fussy cut out this door, but look at this handle. What's wrong with you? How can you make a ha door <laughs> handle like this? It turns the wrong way. <laughs> It's unexcusable when you sit and draw things and line it up to put in a coloring book that's going to be published. I mean, that's just, you had one job, right? But when you open up the door, you will see a drawing from one of my favorite places when I grew up. I grew up in Greenland and we kind of skipped school a lot when it was sunlight. There's not much sunlight up there. I think some days are so short that you only get four hours of daylight. So of course, when you're a kid, you don't want to spend those four hours sitting in school. So uh, we skipped school a lot. And then we met up in two abandoned houses. There's actually three houses, but the, the most cozy ones <laughs> were these two. <laughs> and uh, we just was playing house in these abandoned houses. So I just remember that as a, a really good memory. And I also remember the big uh, clusters, the flocks of ravens that followed our, us kids. You know, we had to walk a while up along a mountain to get to these houses. And it was like the raven recognized us or something. So uh, yeah, there was a uh, good, good <laughs> skipping school memories. This is a pocket where I uh, took something from a fib, which is an envelope that Teresa Petersman, she sent me some, a letter and she is so cute. She makes her own envelopes. So in a way I also call this the fib art. So I wanted to make her envelope into a pocket. And just to illustrate that it's a pocket, I'm just tucking in this. Uh, this is nothing special. It's just a card. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it actually works also as um, an introduction to my small envelope on this tea bag that I got here. So I can just tuck it in like that. Okay, soup label, tomato soup from Bouvet. Something <laughs> exciting. And um, a quote for happy uh, childhood. A happy childhood is the worst possible preparation for life. <laughs> Add a charm. Um, I My envelope stamp charm. Happy mail from Sandra. And it's because uh, Sandra, she uh, sent me some happy mail where she decorated her envelope. So I use that as a charm. A door. If it doesn't open, it's not your door. And I got my door on the other side of this tag. Use stickers or labels. And of course, Bob Owen's Lost Relative stickers got a perfect spot right there. Use an envelope. That's Teresa Peterman's envelope. Yeah, and this prompt, marble with paint. I thought that was my last prompt, <laughs> but apparently it seems like I also am missing the prompt coffee filter. So today I'm gonna think, try and marble paint on something that looks like coffee filter. I don't have, we don't drink coffee like that with, you know, the old school way where we use filters. So I think I'm just gonna tear up a tea bag and use that material to get some marble paints on because then I'm killing two prompts with one go. Okay, this is more of the game prompt. A new game called Scattergory Game. And I did this online on a stream. So uh, we played it. And this is a cartoon character. My favorite is Calvin and Hobbes. Been for years. So of course I uh, took this kind of a frame 
and then uh, try to you know frame him up <laughs> useless random fact yeah <laughs> we got a mail sent to we got a business contract with the uh, postnor which is our postal system and uh, they wrote a letter to me that i received the 27th of december and the letter was this notice saying to all our business partners we are happy to inform you that extra hands are being brought in to ensure that deliveries during the holidays will arrive in just time and the holidays they're talking about is christmas <laughs> and we celebrate christmas the 24th of december so getting that card the 27th of december was just hilarious um and another random random useless fact is turtle Turtles aren't silent. Turtles make a range of noises, anything from chicken-like clucks to dog-like barking. And I didn't know that at all. I thought they were like totally mute. Origami. I managed to uh, fault myself this turtle to go with my random turtle fact. And uh, fortune cookie uh, sayings, then I just took some um, notes from Danish New Year's Eve crackers that are, uh, you know, the same as fortune cooker cookie th sayings. <laughs> and they're not worth trying to translate into English. Because you know how it is. A lot of things get lost in translation. Mm. A rainbow. Easy one. And phone book. Oh, I found my dad's handwriting where he wrote down uh, a number so of course I glued that in so I got that forever <laughs> okay let's move to this place Monopoly items and then I managed to look up the original drawing from the Monopoly where you are sent to jail so it, you pick up this card and then there is this cartoon drawing of this officer and the card says, Janet, go directly to jail. <laughs> Do not pass go. Do not be persistent. So, and Chinese checker game. I just glued in something in Chinese here because um, I didn't have the, you know, I saw how Janet draw, drew her checker game and I was like, oh, oh my God, <laughs> it was so intricate. So in, instead, I'm just putting in this and then pretending that that's the direction of how to play it. I know, it's like skipping over a prompt. Like, oh my god, now, now I'm feeling bad. <laughs> Some of my prompts are like really skipping over where you shouldn't, you know. So if I just draw the shape of the Chinese checker game. And then, of course, there is a lot of holes here. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I'm probably <laughs> going to uh, recall wrong, but some of the area got blue balls, red balls, yellow, white and black hmm maybe green also to just <laughs> hit that number yeah but look how you can actually fast kind of work on these prompts if you are like me in a bit of a hurry okay that was the chinese checker post-it notes i got several and I actually managed to look up my first precious post-it notes from my Hobonichi and Kiki K planner sets. So it's fun to put those in. Fiba, you know, this is the greeting card from Bob Owen. So of course it replicates the perfect for Fiba. <laughs> and then the uh, purple page, I took some really granulating watercolors from Schminke and oh my god look how beautiful it is it's just so beautiful love 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 the texture use a ruler I got a ruler with funky shapes 
so I just drew in some of these shapes I've always wondered I think I you, you use them if you're making a diagram of, of you know like you know if you if you're making like a, a map over some actions you can give each action a a diagram so here you have to do a file you know <laughs> so but this rule has always been a little bit of a puzzle for me like mm, how do we really use that uh, let's see historic article uh, Didi was talking about Kai Nielsen and uh, I actually tripped over an article about Kai Nielsen and um, it's in Danish and it's a replicate from an article printed in 1920 and it's the question in the article is is he showing too much is his statues making people blush like are they too uh, naked <laughs> so it's a whole uh, article printed in 1920 where they talk about art and nudity and uh, I shouldn't probably <laughs> probably not say these words out loud here on YouTube because <laughs> you know how hysterical YouTube is about that napkins page of cats and uh, I just drew a lot of cats fabric or fiber took just uh, snippets and scraps from uh, my sewing area <laughs> and this is my ransom note Okay, I had a YouTube upload and it was something called look at my watercolor collection and then I was showcasing every single palette that I have and then an angry guy from Australia thought that it was tasteless and that I should actually donate my stuff because I mean I just in his opinion had too much. Hey lady, I think it is selfish to have so many watercolors be a better person and share. <laughs> so that's my ransom note. Um, Tetris. Oh my god, I didn't even. Is it disappearing? It's disappeared. Okay, it's disappeared. But I can redraw it. I thought I was more finished <laughs> than this. I kind of knew that I'm skipping over. You know, I'm doing a fast scavenger hunt this year, but it's okay. It can be anything you want, and then we want that perfect shape coming down here. Oh my God! I played so much Tetris one Tetris once in my life that it was impossible for me to walk down a street not looking at the park cars thinking that you could place them differently so you can fit in an extra car that's when you know that you play too much tetris a uh, matchbook i just do matches i don't have uh, the old school uh, matches and uh, i know i could have made one myself but instead i just uh, did like this Candyland is also a game from the US. Uh, I tried to look up the drawings about that king, you know, and a princess, and it was just really confusing. So I kept thinking about our Candyland because we actually have a store here in my town called Candyland. And uh, I am so lucky that the postal systems, yeah, well, you know what? They laid down all our post offices so now we are handling our packages in supermarkets and in tobacco stores and one of the stores that you can uh, collect your mail is actually in this Candyland store so <laughs> of course it's uh, always nice when you shopped to go and get what you shopped while get an opportunity to buy some delicious snacks so um, it's always a treat <laughs> when you get an SMS from Candyland <laughs> that they got something for you. So yeah, use a stencil. I was so lucky to be gifted this lettering guide from Janet. And I did try and use it a lot in this scavenger hunt because it makes your writing so neat and straight. So uh, to just, uh, you know, 
use the lettering guide, I was thinking, what should I write? Why not something about Janet and cheese? Because as we all know, she should say cheers on New Year's Eve. And then instead she said cheese. And it was just fun, you know. <laughs> so, um, good cheese need good com companions. I've never met a problem that cheese couldn't solve. Just say cheese. First, first cheese. <laughs> Eat, sleep, cheese, repeat. So the real question is, should we trust people who don't like cheese? <laughs> Add an old photo and then I found this picture of Lars's mom and my son. And then you can see half of Lars here. <laughs> but it's just a perfect picture. They're all smiley and happy in her home, you know. So that was a good one. Snack packaging had to be these caramel uh, I really love them. It's a turtle shaped chocolate with liquid caramel inside and it's kind of my favorite <laughs> so It's there something snarky and uh, I have to say it goes to Janet She opened up a stream saying hi Dan boy YouTube just let everyone in and you are the proof of that <laughs> I think it's hilarious gift wrap Christmas gift wrapping, totally gold paper. And yes, I did buy that roll because I was hoping to be able to use some of it in my uh, craft room after Christmas. Calligraphy, I simply just wrote, hello there. I'm not so good at calligraphy. And then I included in some stickers of pens, calligraphy pens. And um, this is a shoe that got... Uh, calligraphy kind of you know texture so yeah it fits right there I think okay use watercolor yeah I like watercolor I could have included a drawing but instead I just um, swatched in the first handmade watercolors that I ever bought from an old pigment recipe and it's of course the pigments from the knee Nila Colores, so uh, handmade watercolors from Italy. <laughs> toilet paper roll, I got instead of adding a toilet paper roll, I got a story about a toilet paper roll. <laughs> you see, my hobby, he, uh, I, he was just uh, decluttering and then I got a little uh, left over from it. He actually had a very giant thick roll of this sandpaper and it looked exactly like a toilet paper roll so of course I swatched them out so and then I left the the you know this on the toilet paper hanging roll and then you know just to prank my family but I really enjoyed my uh, hubby's uh, reaction to it he was like yeah well we might as well just use it up <laughs> This is fun. Doodles and Centangle. And I'm so proud of myself. I'm not a Centangle. So instead I found this strip of stickers that had some dots on it and some brown stripes. And then I just Centangled on top of that. And I really like the way it came out. You know, like leaving that brown sticker background. So yeah. <laughs> and then I tried to make these dimensional tubes and I am actually going all on board with those because I'm using here I'm using a sharpie pen and here I'm using something else and here I'm testing it with a tombow markers didn't work so yeah <laughs> a little bit of practicing but I like this one the best map page I just took a strip of the map from I think it's it's called Bedford so it must be like a US map sorry game never played it before uh, did didn't find anything else um, except for the logo of it online so uh, I just uh, drew the logo and I was supposed to do something over here regarding the sorry game but the uh, I think it's just about knocking people home, you know, <laughs> like Ludo or something. Hmm. Yeah. Sparkles and glitter. 
Then I took washi tapes from uh, this Christmas. I I don't have a lot of washi tape, but what I got for my Christmas collection actually got a lot of glitter. So ta-ta, my Christmas washi. So yeah, that's just it. Oops. At Tippin, it's this one. It's um, a map because we also had to do like a map, right? <laughs> so it's a map of where you can grow chocolate beans in the world. So yeah, page of heart. And then I just hand drew some hearts. The uh, monochromatic page uh, screams to just be worked on in pencil. So uh, I did that. Okay, I need to stop. I, I'm losing my voice. I need to get something to drink. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, I actually got something, you know, artwork from another person. What was it? Where's the prompt? Okay. <laughs> I got these art stands and they're made by Sam Yidi. His name is right there. Will it, will it focus? I hope so. And he uh, got this gallery called Stalke Out of Space. And I'm supposed to uh, glue these on in the city as some sort of uh, city art, street art. You know, you see them all the time. It's like a street signs and then on the back of the street sign, a lot of graffiti makers and other artists have uh, glued in stickers of um you know just artwork <laughs> so he created this artwork because of the situation with ukraine where he have taken the flag from ukraine and then five bullet holes with blood running down from it because ukraine is bleeding at the moment so i was thinking Ooh, I actually think it's a perfect spot to put in my scavenger hunt. I know there is glue on the back of these because it's stamps, but I don't want to lick it. So I just glue it in here. Where is a good place? Like right here, I think. So getting more and more filled up okay now we got that issue with the coffee ring I mean I am dazzled how can you not have <laughs> fulfilled that prompt that is the easiest of all the prompts can we agree on that you're able to make these coffee rings without even knowing that you're making them you know <laughs> so uh, let's get it in coffee ring I actually drew some coffee and then um, put a coffee stamp right there and then drew the coffee ring on the papers so I did work a little bit on the prompt okay check a game love is like playing checkers you have to know which man to move but let's get some sort of a coffee ring maybe over here actually and let's make a genuine coffee ring. <laughs> I can't believe that I have to make this on purpose. Okay, it's pretty soaked in. Are we ready? I'm stamping with coffee now. So. Yeah, it's gonna dry up and be a genuine coffee ring. And for the people who are being introduced to the scavenger hunt for the first time, you would be thinking, this is so crazy. It's like a waste of time. But let me tell you, it's a very creative way of spending your time. Because we are a lot of women who are making this scavenger hunt. So part of the fun is also to know that we are a lot of women out there working on the same crazy prompts. So seeing their interpretations is just super fun. I'm going to leave that mess right there. <laughs> and hopefully it will dry in. Uh, okay, I'm going to heat set it with a heat gun. Because I need to flip the page. No, I don't need to flip the page. 
the last prompt here is um what is it bills grocery recipes and the demand notice i got over here on the other side and this is janet m young's art envelope isn't it just gorgeous she's entangled every single bit of this i mean it's just the most awesome fib art that i got and then i plan to um glue in here my marbled pages so i think i'm gonna put this book aside and let this dry on its own and then talk about the task for today because you see i needed to fulfill a prompt working with coffee filters i don't have coffee filters I make my uh, coffee else how you know in a, a different way so I'm thinking about taking these tea bags because the paper on these uh, tea bags is a little bit like coffee filters right so if I cut it up I may be able to slice it up and then hopefully should I just keep it like that when it's a pocket yeah I'll see if I can do that because my scavenger hunt book is rather small you know and it's been such a treat working with small prompts this time because it allowed me to finish otherwise if I had like last year I had a piano hinge bound journal just designated for my scavenger hunt and uh, it turned out to be a really huge project because you had so many pages so this year I'm so glad that my prompts are as small as they can get and that I can still participate in the game <laughs> I got the lid from some uh, oil pastels and I'm thinking of putting it into a plastic bag and then my plan is let's first just test it out with this guy right here okay my plan is to simply just take these balls I don't have marbled um, balls marbles made you know the made out of glass they're super heavy compared to this kind of not so heavy ball so i'm not sure if this is going to work at all because i think one of the reasons why you need it marbles is because of the weight of the glass ball that's going to roll over your paper and be better at dispersing a, a glob of paint if you know what i mean so first i was thinking about just using ink um, because it's a little bit more liquid than using acrylic paint so maybe the marbles will roll over oh man lids don't you just hate lids <laughs> maybe the marbles will be able to roll over this I did shake these uh, inks up before opening them okay should I I should have taped it down I'm gonna tape it down it's the first time that I ever am using marbles to do anything crazy like this <laughs> when I saw the prompts marbles I was thinking what the hell is that how can you do anything abstract using marbles but apparently you can so uh, I'm not even sure how this is going to play out it's just soaking in that's not fun let's just take the acrylic test it out I'm actually not sure uh, what to aim for I think it's going to be uh, just a a lot of mess but uh, here we go the plan is to put in the marbles and then roll it around look how it's getting stuck to the paint well 
Yeah, using ink was not a good idea. It simply just soaks right up into the coffee filter. But already by now you can see that I got something happening on the bottom of my tray. Okay. Oh man, I knew that this was going to be like super messy. I'm gonna wait until the very end to pick up that coffee filter. Because right now I'm just thinking about uh, controlling this mess. <laughs> it's getting a little bit out of hand. Oh uh, yeah, I could turn off the camera while I'm looking for something to protect my table, but I think you guys want to see the whole mess. Nothing but the mess. Okay, this might be a misunderstanding, but I'm thinking why not try and push this one down just for fun. And then flip it over and see what we get. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. I still got some paint on the marbles. So maybe it's actually nicer to work with now where I don't have like a paint blob in the tray. But it's more like the marbles are painted yeah you know what this is not crazy at all whoever invented this idea i mean it's not crazy at all there are actually some crazy uh, patterns coming here very randomly I am extremely surprised over how fast these marbles filled out a whole sheet. And if you stop in time, you will not get that saturated frame all over, but just, uh, you know, you will <laughs> still have like, like a unbroken line work at the end. But yeah, so far I can really understand the madness. This is much more better than this one I think okay let's um, find a way to dry this sheet grab another sheet let me just put it here you know what I really like the idea of coloring in the marbles so first I'm gonna take the last residue of the marbles just to get, you know, the last out of it. Okay. <laughs> And then I want to introduce a new color and I'm thinking about something bluish. Oh good, why don't you just throw it? It might seem like a lot but we really want to coat in these uh, marbles with that color. <laughs> if it wants to play it doesn't look like it. Okay, we actually got some blue down. And what about introducing a yellow? Now we're going totally Ukraine colors. Can you see that? I have to help it along. Hopefully it will not be cheating. 
and it does want to create a green. But now I think that the, the marbles got a little bit of both colors on them. Quickly put them back here in the tray. Okay, now for the print. I put this one back in. And now the colored marbles. It is going to show up as the same generic pattern. Like, you can just tell. Oops. <laughs> that was not meant to <laughs> be going that way. Okay, now I really am creating a mess. You know, oh, acrylic paint on my table. But I, I can see the, the madness of it. Like you are creating a pattern that you are able to replicate. So it's not like it's uh, it's not like you know like jelly print when it's super unique and super different from time to time. This was this will actually create that uh, that print <laughs> and then you can work in layers on top of it and just adding more and more and more so hmm it was actually really fun <laughs> but i think i will uh, end this here and then um, dry up this sheet so it can be glued into my scavenger hunt and then of course i will lift off my faux coffee filter oh. <laughs> they're getting stuck to the drying rack the faux coffee filter is way down here and then it's just a shame that it's just like totally dissolving itself this it is called disintegrating oh my god i'm not sure i can lift it off here we go. Yeah, the coffee filter is like totally soaked in. But look at the back of it. It's prettier, I think, than the front of it. So this has to dry also. And then we can see what we end up with. <laughs> okay. Let me uh, end the stream. Oh my god, Janet. Look at the mess, and I'm gonna get it on my mouse. <laughs> okay, I'm back. <laughs> it takes a lot to talk me uh, silent, but I managed to do so. <laughs> okay, back to this. Um, I actually have uh, a lot of pattern paper in this scavenger hunt, and it kind of helped me with a lot of the prompts. So repetitive pattern, I just use this uh, pattern paper with roses. And then we got dominoes, which is a game. And I wrote, we are like dominoes. I fall for you, you fall for another. And then I drew in some domino tiles. Never have I ever questioned. <laughs> Never have I ever fall asleep at work, I wrote. I'm not sure it qualifies as a never have I ever question. I don't know the game, you know. <laughs> but I actually have fallen asleep at work <laughs> once. So... <laughs> coffee ring and then i need to i can't believe that i why didn't i ha, why, why don't i have a coffee ring that's crazy okay <laughs> the coffee filter it got a little bit bent right here i think i'm gonna choose a side maybe this one and then just uh, staple it in kind of crazy i think it got too saturated but at least uh, I try to work with that prompt. <laughs> okay, on these two pages, I could actually glue in what we got. Let's see what we got. I actually don't think it's that bad. Am I the only one thinking about Sidney Pollock? I mean, imagine if you took like light gray step outs of, you know, black and then uh, white in the end. I think you could actually create some cool uh, abstracts. But since uh, these sheets are wider than my book, 
I think I will cut off a strip of this one and then uh, try and work on the strip <laughs> see what what you can use these papers for right so this one could be glued in here and then this one can you imagine like working with silhouettes so if I take uh, like a uh, should we just take a black one <clears throat> I mean, it's just the texture that we're after, right? So you could actually uh, kind of block in a person shape of a guy. <laughs> Let's try and make him uh, like he's walking out of the the frame. <laughs> Let's just for fun see how it looks. Oh, I got I'm working on the wood pulp paper so it's got tooth on it so it's a little bit difficult to fill in all the tooth on the paper maybe if I smear it with my finger I will be able to press down some of the oil stick into the tooth Yeah, it does look funny. Yeah, as a textured background, I think it's worth playing with this technique one more time. I really like that randomness, you know, like, uh, yeah. I'm glad that I tried it out. <laughs> and this is totally, you know, uh, Something that I wouldn't have thought of if I didn't participate in the scavenger hunt. So that's the good thing. Yeah, I like it a lot. <laughs> that was crazy and fun. Anyway, I think I can say that I can wrap up my scavenger hunt now. I worked with all the prompts and I can uh, say to Janet that um, enroll me into the contest. I think I... Uh, I'm patting myself on the back of the shoulder for making it to the deadline. I think I've participated four times and only half of them is uh, delivered in time. So <laughs> but thanks for watching. I hope it was uh, fun to see my flip through of uh, my crazy prompts. And thank you so much for doing this, Janet. It's just awesome. So hope you will be doing it in 2023. <laughs> Bye-bye.